calificas para ser legal? ¿Quieres saber? Solo llama al abogado Andrés Mejer. So thank you for joining us. Again, my name is Andrés Mejer, and let's first talk about what is Trump's immigration reform plan. Well, it doesn't really have a name, but it is a fundamental change to our present immigration system. And it really has two principal components. First, he wants what's called a merit-based immigration system. He's not the first time that he's talked about it. He's fleshed it out a little bit more here. Secondly, it's changes to our southern border. So let's talk about the first one. Merit-based system, what is that? Well, he's saying, look, we want, I should say, what he says is today, the present system, 66% of immigrant visas are granted to family-based petitions. Meaning, my father applied for me, my wife applied for me, I applied for my kids, or I applied for my parents or my siblings. It's family-focused. And only 12% are skills-focused or employment-focused. Now, important thing to note, on the family side, in many countries, there are not enough visas. For example, if you're from Mexico, it will take you longer to enter the U.S. So if you're from Mexico, India, China, or the Philippines, it'll take you longer than it would if you were from the U.K., um, Chile, Argentina, or other countries, just by the number of volume of immigrants coming in. On the employment side, although there are those limitations, they don't reach capacity. Meaning, if today you as an employer wants to uh, want to apply for somebody, you can. There will be a visa. The problem is it's expensive, it's difficult, and it's time consuming. And this administration has made it harder than it's ever been before. So, but he says, listen, I want to change to a merit-based system. How do I do that? He's going to assign points. How many? We don't know yet. He's, you know, these are principles. He hasn't given any details. But he's going to focus on age, education, job offer, skills, uh, command of the English language, and to, to a lesser extent, family ties to the U.S. This is not so different from what Canada, Australia, and New Zealand have today. They do have merit-based systems. So I'm not saying it's inherently bad. Um, it all depends on how it's going to be implemented. Um, so he wants to go from family-based, 66% today, and 12% employment, to 60% employment. That is a dramatic change. And he wants high skills, meaning college educated, years of experience, high wage earning jobs. The average median immigrant family today makes 43,000. He wants to change it to 96,000. So what does that tell you? This is not small business friendly. Most small businesses don't necessarily have many employees that are making $96,000 or more. They may have one, they may have two, but they don't really have 10 and still be a small business. Because think about it, if you have 10 employees making 100,000, that's at least a million in payroll. That means that business would have to be at a bare minimum five to seven million dollars in annual income. That's not a small business anymore. It's a medium-sized business. So he, w and most of businesses in the US are small businesses. So this does not help the majority of businesses. It may help American society as a whole, assuming there are enough jobs to support that. I don't know that there are. Yes, there is a need and a desire, particularly in STEM jobs, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, to come in and those are high, high paying jobs, generally speaking, because they have to have masters and doctorates degrees. But look, doctors, yes, will be making that or more coming in. That's true. Most attorneys are not. Most engineers starting out also aren't. So it, most accountants, the same. They're not earning $100,000 the moment they graduate from college. You know, that's somebody with 10, 15, 20 years experience, and depending on where in the country that you live. So this plan sounds good on some level, realistically, 
what it's going to do is reduce the number of immigrants, which is what he wants. He says he's not going to reduce the number of visas available. But if there aren't jobs to if if there aren't jobs available, then those individuals aren't coming. So details matter. Um, also, what about low skilled labor? What about agriculture, farming, for example, landscaping, construction? These are menial jobs. Some are highly skilled, meaning a good air conditioning technician, for example, or a good um, plumber. You know, those that's that may not be book smarts. That may not be I got a degree in plumbery, but I got a vocational degree or a vocational certification, maybe, or in some countries, maybe I've just been doing it for ten years. So, skills are important. And agriculture, listen, you go to Florida, Texas, Arizona, particularly California, parts of New York on the north, they can't get by without immigrant labor. They just can't. Um, it's a real problem. And the margins aren't very high in comparison to large ag agricultural companies. So how do you address low-skilled labor? We don't know. It's important.